In this lesson we will step back for a second uh, from the parameterization process and focus on modeling. So once again I will go to new generic model template and we will uh, dive into and this forms tools. We know this extrusion tool already but uh, when I go back to this tool you can see that I have standard draw tool and I can create any type of shape I would like as long as it's a closed loop. So I can create geometry consisting of lines, arcs, roundings um, or splines which is very rarely used at least by me but we can always create something more uh, organic but when it comes to the organic shapes it's a very um, tough topic when it comes to, to Revit because we have to understand that uh, as far as uh, Revit it's, uh, it's a beam tool it still have um, like a cut, uh, cut thinking when it comes to geometry so we it's very hard to create something organic like cushions or uh, curtains uh, such elements are better to to be created in other software like Maya or 3ds Max and uh, I'm saying it only because to save you some frustration if uh, if you uh, have problems uh, when you will occur problems with modeling uh, objects like sofas and other things where the geometry will not look as good as in other uh, software like 3ds Max or other so it's it's just the the product limitation but it's not the main uh, main um, aspect of beam the main aspect of beam is information so uh, the geometry it's always uh, like um, supporting the the non geometrical information that the identity data uh, but in this course of course I will show you the best method to, to create something that not only is parametric and uh, is useful when it comes to beam project but also looks as good as possible so going back to the theme uh, this is extrusion it's a closed loop I can select finish edit mode and that's it now I can using shape handles or properties change its height or depth or to some extent modify its shape using these handles okay so this is extrusion the second thing would be blend uh, 